This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydro Mag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Welcome to episode two of Hydra Show, the gardening show of the future. Here's Nick with what's coming up on today's episode. Coming up on today's show. The girls attempt to set up a 12 pot dripper system in this episode's presenter challenge. Gemma interviews Macro Dong from OG Reflector. We get some quick growing tips from Robbie of Metrop Concentrated Nutrients and Michael at Holland Hydroponics. Bill gives us a lesson on planting seeds in different growing mediums. We interview Matt from Platinium Hydroponics. Greenfinger Hydroponics of London set up a gadget filled grow room in our Mega Rooms feature. And Gemma sees a DIY IWS air pruning system at the aquaculture greenhouses. All that and news, this episode's competition and more. Thank you, Nick. First of all, I went to see Panch at Greenfinger Hydroponics to find out more about the different ranges of growth mediums available on the market today. I'm here now with Panch at Greenfinger Hydroponics, who's going to talk us through the use of growth mediums. So Panch, I can see we've got a variety of growth mediums here, um, some of which are mixed. Yeah, so I mean these days there's a vast array of, of mediums for the grower to choose from. Uh, and what you want to bear in mind when you're choosing your grow medium is what type of plant you're growing, how much aeration in your, its roots needs, uh, drainage is very important in a grow medium, and how often you're going to be feeding it. So are you hand watering, are you using a dripper system? Um, with something like soil, you can see it's got a little bit of perlite in it here, this one. Yes. You've got to be very careful with waterlogging your roots because overwatering will it, it, you won't get the drainage you need and you will get waterlogged roots. So what we do if we are using soil, which I like to avoid, but if I have to use soil, I'll put in plenty of perlite just so I can be sure I'm not ever going to overwater. Okay, so we've got rock wool, which is perfect for a dripper system because you're going to get plenty of aeration to your roots there. Ceramis, this one at the back here, looks like tiny little bits of clay. Yep. Um, that holds a lot more water, so you've got to be careful you don't overwater that. Clay pebbles, a very, very common choice for hydroponic growers will hold very little water and allow it to drain through, hence the reason it's so popular for hydroponics growers. Um, we've got one of my favourites here, Diahydro, which is uh, basically made from silicon, so it's going to provide all the silicon your plants need. It also tends to hold a lot of water, so you can't underwater, it's very hard to underwater, but also the drainage with it is very, very good. Uh, and you've got the classic cocoa fibre, uh, which again gives you good, great aeration, but again, if you're using drippers with cocoa fibre, it is possible to overwater and waterlog it because you need plenty of oxygen for your roots to grow. So what we quite often tend to do with the cocoa fibre is mix it up with the clay pebbles and that will provide the drainage you need. Um, and again, you can see a mix here of uh, the dihydro and the clay pebbles. Yeah. The dihydro will hold water, the clay pebbles will allow it to drain through. So it's all about getting sufficient drainage for your root system to get the oxygen it needs to get a nice healthy root system going. So you mentioned that dihydro contains silicon, which is used by the plants. Um, now, do any of the other growth mediums provide anything for the plants? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, other than soil, which contains a little bit of silicon and some nutrition, they're all inert, so the simple answer is no, basically. The advantage of using these other mediums is you get much better drainage, so you, again, you're getting much better oxygen into your root system and much better root system as a result. Later in the series, we'll be revisiting Greenfinger Hydroponics for more essential hydroponic tips. 
If you're looking for more information on growth mediums, you'll find an article in issue one of our official magazine. Visit www.hydromag.co.uk. It's that time again where our producers set Pooja and I a head-to-head -head challenge. I wonder what's on the cards this week? Let's take a look. Thank you. In the studio, you will notice two piles of hydroponics products, one for each of you. In this week's challenge, you both have to set up the equipment using only the instructions provided. The winner will be the first person to set up their equipment. Your time starts now. Let's go. Now, most people want the easiest possible way to grow their own produce. Fundamentally, we all want the same thing when push comes to shove, and that is the best possible yield. With that in mind, what is the best way to grow our own produce? Is it using hydroponics or aeroponics? Well, I'm joined in the studio today by a man who sells both kinds of systems, so hopefully he can give us his own expert opinion and shed some light. His name is Matt, he's here on behalf of Platinum Hydroponics, Matt, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Nick? I'm very well, thank you. Are you? Yeah, good. Always. Well, well, thanks for joining us today. So hopefully you're going to give us some information about the pot systems that Platinium supply. Yep. So first of all, can you explain the types of systems that Platinium manufacture? Yeah, um, the Platinium hydroponic system, basically, it's quite an extensive range. Um, and you, you touched on it earlier there, the two sort of main ways of growing it, hydroponically and aeroponically this system incorporates basically, that's the crux of the system. Um, there's eight different types. Um, firstly, you've got the aeroponic type, which is we've got an Aero Star, an Aero Pro, and an Aero Top. Then you've got your hydroponic style, which basically is the other five. You've got the Hydro Grow for a single plant system, Hydro Star, Hydro Pro, Ebb and Flow, and Hydro Stone. So basically, you've, within the system as a whole, Platinum, we cover both angles. That's quite an extensive range, so I mean, could you say that there's something for everybody? Yeah, yeah, definitely within the modular system as a whole, I think there's something there for the absolute beginner, which is the single plot hydro grow system, um, which basically has a system that sort of feeds via a pump as opposed to hand feeding, one plant to look after, right up to the aeroponic aero top system, which is a little bit more tricky to use, um, and it's probably a little bit alien to what people are used to in household plants, but yeah, I'd say the, the range of platinum from beginner right the way through to expert. So what is it that makes the platinum systems different to that that's already on the market? Okay, yeah, there's, there's quite a few things. Um, the first one, what I would say is it's a brand new design system. Quite a lot of the systems that are similar that have been out there, been out there quite, quite a while now. So this is um, it's quite an up-to-date version. There's a few nice little quirky details on there, like the viewing panel, which helps when the system's sort of going in these kinds of systems, you can get a bit busy, but you can sort of take the panel off, get inside, see your water level, sort of adjust the pump if required, and basically fill and you know check your nutrient solution. Um, another sort of, one of the biggest benefits of the system is, is it is a modular system. So there's quite a, a varied amount of types of systems, um, but more importantly, we've been sort of in the game quite a while now, there's a lot of pit tent sales that have happened, and this system predominantly in the first part of the launch, has got systems that fit more sizes of tents that's out there. So 40 by 40 centimetre, 60 by 60, 80 by 80, metre by metre, 1.2 by 1.2. And they're all nice and square, like I said, modular, and they fit the tents lovely. So yeah, it's, um, it covers from the basically from the beginner right through to the expert. Okay, Matt, so would you argue that uh, the platinum systems give you more control over your grow? Yep, control definitely, which is very important um, once you're growing. And also flexibility, I think is a, is a key point I'd like to put in there. Um, flexibility being the systems, you've basically, you know, you've got eight different styles of system um, in terms of sizing, 40 by 40, 60 by 60, 80 by 80, meter by meter, and 1.2 by 1.2, and that's centimeters. And that's square modular systems because the amount of tents that have sort of been used and people, because of the spaces at premium, people growing tents. So we've sort of based this first module and the first launch of the Platinum is to fit within those perimeters. And yeah, the flexibility again is, you touched on earlier that we've got aeroponics and hydroponics. Really, that's a choice. Hydroponics, you know, on the simpler sort of systems are maybe for the beginners, the aeroponic, a little bit more tricky to get your head round and, and to deliver basically, and that's maybe for the expert. But this system sort of combines the both. 
that you can basically, and this is one of the plus points of the platooning, is the flexibilities. You can actually jump from one system to the other. So you've got the standard, what people will probably get their heads around in terms of feeding the plant instead of hand feeding the house plant. You can basically set up a system that feeds it on itself through an irrigation system. And then you've got ones basically that grow minus soil, which is, you know, aeroponic, hydroponics combined together. Okay, well that all sounds very interesting, but for someone like me, it's also quite confusing. Okay. Um, why have you got so many different systems? Okay, um, yeah, there's quite a lot of systems in there, and basically what we're trying to do is reach out to each different level of grower, from the beginner right to the expert, and also in terms of the systems, people have favourable methods that they use. So yeah, I, I take your point, it can be a little bit confusing, um, but quite simply, and the best way to sort of break it down is, you basically, you choose your size of tank, which is obviously all to do with how much space you've got to grow. And once you sort of got your parameters of the, of the actual tank, you then decide which method you want to go with. Is it a dripper, standard dripper, which is quite relatively easy, or is it into a little bit more technical aeroponic? And then we've got a few systems that sort of sit in between. So the easiest way to break it down is, number one, sort of how much room have you got? Number two, what method do you fancy? And number three, get to it. For those people that are new to hydroponics, yeah. what would be a good entry level system for them to start with? Um, I think the HydroGrow. HydroGrow is probably the most simple one in terms of most people have a vision of a house plant needs watering, hand feeding, and once you've sort of got that built in, that you know we've got a pump that basically is doing it for you. You've got a reservoir filling and pumping in, and with the HydroGrow, it's basically clear pebbles is a, is a great and ideal medium for anybody to start in, and it's a one plant system. And I think once you get to multi-sites, you're getting a little bit more technical. But once you sort of got your head around the whole principle of hydroponics, of growing into the sort of one plant system, which is the hydro grower, and then you can build from there. And like I said, the flexibility of the system would let you build if you wanted to go then into straight hydroponics or aeroponics. So what sorts of plants does the platinium system cater for? Um, again, you've got quite a range to go out because of the flexibility of the system. You've got the hydrostone and ebb and flow which are basically grown within stone wool, and they're for smaller herbs, basil, lettuces. Um, that's perfectly ideal. Then you've got the star range, and star being 6.4 litre pots, which is the medium sized pot. And then, and that sort of kit is in between. And then you've got the pro, pro kits, and that's basically anything that's pro. It's an 11 litre pot, and you can grow larger plants, tomatoes, your chilies, your cucumbers. So again, you've got a range from smaller plants to bigger plants, and then anything in between. So now you're going to give us a demonstration of setting up one of the platinum systems. Uh, which one have you brought for us to look at today? Uh, today we brought the Hydro Pro, which is a Pro 11 litre system and it's the, the one metre version. So that's um, Hydro Pro 100, 100 centimetre by 100 centimetre, gives you 12 11 litre pots. Okay then Matt, should we do it? Why not? Let's do it. Still to come on Hydro Show we reveal the winner of this week's presenter challenge. Gemma interviews Macro Dong from OG Reflector. We get some quick growing tips from Robbie of Metrop Concentrated Nutrients and Michael at Holland Hydroponics. Bill gives us a lesson on planting seeds in different growing mediums. Greenfinger Hydroponics of London set up a gadget filled grow room in our Mega Rooms feature and Gemma sees a DIY IWS air pruning system at the aquaculture greenhouses. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by HydroMag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk.
upon a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow. Well, let us introduce to you the aroma formula. So variable, it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The Aroma Formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit www.hydroponics.co.uk in May to find these fantastic offers. Holland Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Last year at Grow Expo 2012, we interviewed a lot of interesting characters. So let's find out how Gemma got on when she met Macro Dong, manufacturer of the OG Reflector. So I'd like to welcome Macro from Grow Lush in Australia. Thank you. Welcome. So, Today we're going to talk about the OG Reflector Macro and it's designed in the US, uh, manufactured by Grow Lush and it's newly available on the UK market, is that right? Correct, yes. And now I'm going to lead you on to my first question. It's, well basically there are lots of reflectors on the market today. What makes this one different? Okay, OG unit is a developed to go vertical lamp concealed fitting. Least fitting is different to others on the market with horizontal lamp. And this one actually designed to, to have a lamp resource stretched and magnified and also the lights distributed evenly. What does OG stand for? OG stands for Original Grow Light. Yeah. Right, Grow Light is an American company. Yeah. They, they designed and developed this unit. Now one criticism of this reflector might be the lamp's not designed to be hung vertically. Does this affect the lamp life? No, it's not. Actually, the lamp manufacturer has developed the lamps suitable for horizontal and vertical these days. And you can see a lot of industry lights, like factory lighting, commercial lighting, they are go vertical anyway, like a high base. So in hydroponics business, hydroponics industry, a lamp is only used for first six, nine months to have a best light spectrum for the plants. So there's no problem of a lamp life short or distorted and so on. Yeah, because they don't last forever. They don't last forever. Place. Yeah, they don't use lamp forever. Because if you do use lamp forever, then you actually waste your energy bill and they don't give you the best results for the plants. Mm -hmm. So what's special about how this reflector stays cool? Uh, this reflector is designed to have a push-pull technology, consume the vacuum technology, so all the air circulating is around the lamp. So the air push through the fitting, and it takes away the heat much quicker than other horizontal reflectors. Great stuff. Do you have any test results to verify this reflector is better than others on the market? Yes, there's lots of test results on the YouTube, and people can log on the YouTube, log in a grow light or OG challenging. You can see the test results on the vertical lamp. The uh, uh, test results are showing the 600 watt, almost equivalent to 1,000 watt in the horizontal fitting. So basically, you save the power bill and it's uh, energy, uh, com energy saving for the, for the fitting as well. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Great stuff, thank you very much for joining no us today. No problem, thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you. Great. So that was Macro from Grow Lush with the OG Reflector. We'll be bringing you more interviews from Grow Expos 2012 later on in the series. If you're looking for more information on lighting reflectors, there's an article in issue 4 of our official magazine, Hydromag. Visit www.hydromag.co.uk. 
So, as part of our continued endeavours to guide you in your grow rooms, we have filmed a series of quick tips from the hydroponics industry's experts. This week's tips come from Robbie from Metrop Concentrated Plant Nutrients and Michael of Holland Hydroponics. To increase plant yield and plant health, always want to keep in mind one of the most important things when it comes to either hydroponics or soil, and that is your water temperature, which is at times one of the most missed things. And like humans, plants require and love a warm temperature around the roots. Um, in hydroponics, this is one of the most beneficial things to help the uptake of nutrients. This is achieved by always keeping a thermostat in your water and at quite a simple bath thermometer will do the job nicely and literally all you have to do is have it sat at all times in your water. When it comes to obviously your water temperature, too cold stress, too warm pathogens, you can alter your water temperature by placing a water heater set to the correct temperature according to the size of your tank. So you always want to keep it at an optimum temperature at around 20 to 25 degrees, no hotter, and you don't want to leave it any lower than 15 degrees would result in shock to the plants. Some books, uh, they have a pH schedule uh, in their book, but they're not the right pH schedule because they just search something on the, go on the Google and they copy and put it in, but they don't know if it's the right one and they can use, for example, a pH schedule that's meant for foliar feed, for example. Um, that's why we show you here the, the right pH schedule. And uh, as you can see on the schedule, that the best pH uh, that you have the best nutrient take up is between the 5-4 and the 6-2. What you can see when uh, the pH starts from 6.5 or higher is that the plant cannot take phosphorus well and phosphorus is the second important element for a plant so it's very very important for the plant to take it but when the plant cannot eat it you create slowly problems um, how can you see that your plant got a phosphor deficiency you can see it with many plants uh, on the, the stem of the leaf uh, it's changing in purple and one of the reasons that you can have a phosphor deficiency is this a too high pH in your medium. The pH of 5.4, well, when you look to the schedule, you can see you can go a little bit lower. But why we recommend 5.4? Because uh, especially when you have a medium like cocoa, the cocoa fiber um, is holding the element copper together. And the lower the pH gets, uh, the less uh, copper the plant can eat and with uh, cocoa it already starts with a pH of 5.4. Um, phosphor is 6.5 but we are talking about 6.2. Why 6.2? Well, um, the element boron uh, is a very small micro element but very important uh, for the plant. Boron is the element that uh, makes the cement in the cells. But when the pH is 6.2 or higher, the plant cannot eat boron well. And that means you can have uh, weaker cells. And that's not what we want. So that is why the best pH in any medium is between 5.4 and 6.2. When growing from seed, there are a number of different grow mediums which we can use. Today our resident expert Mr Bill is here to help shed some light on how to plant different size seeds in different growing mediums. So Bill, welcome. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me here. So we have a range of growth mediums here in front of us. Can you tell us what they are? Sure. We have soil that will take the formation of any type of growing chamber we have. We have some clay pellets that will also take into the shape of the container that we put them into. We have rock wool that comes in a multitude of different types of blocks. And we have some vermiculite, which again, can take the shape of any container that we use. We usually use it in soil to go and act as a water holder. And we use it in some of the pebble type of growing mediums to go and give the uh, a seed an opportunity to adhere itself to a growing medium because the clay pellets they're just going to uh, run through type of thing once you add water. 
The last time I went shopping, Bill, I noticed that the prices of seeds were quite expensive and they varied the prices as well. How can I ensure that my seeds germinate? In order to make sure that your seeds germinate, there's a simple thing that you can go and do. You can take some tissue paper. Paper towels are going to be a lot stronger and a lot better to do this. And what you do is you fold up a bunch of paper towels, give yourself about a quarter inch of paper towels, put it in the bottom of a tray. Now with the paper towels there, wet them, then you're going to insert your seeds in there. Also what you want to try and do is put your paper so that it's off to the corner as we've done here. You can pick up the corner, you can remove it, and you can see your seeds are spaced apart from each other. If the seeds were to be touching, then fungi and molds can kill more of the seeds. So by them having them separate and you start seeing some fungi or some mold going on in there, you can remove it. Now what you want to do when you're finished putting the water in here is you want to keep them warm. And you must make sure that this, the growing medium, or in this case the paper towel, is always wet. As soon as it dries out, the seed's going to dry out and die. So I think most people will be familiar with soil. So how would you plant a seed in the soil? That one's kind of easy. You simply poke a hole in the soil. You can read the package and it'll tell you how far down into the growing medium that you need to put it. You just take your seed, you drop it in, you cover it up, make sure it's all wet, make sure the seed doesn't float to the surface. One of the problems we have with soil is that we can overwater it. So how can we control the moisture levels for germination? In most soil containers, there's holes at the bottom of the container. Always make sure those holes are open to air. They're not sitting in water. That way oxygen can move up through the growing medium as it dries out and gives an opportunity for it to dry out. If you block up those holes, then there's no air going to get down in there. It's only going to get from the surface downwards, which is going to take a lot more time. Are there any other ways that we can test that the moisture in the soil is right? We can uh, stick our finger into it, make a feeling of what this moisture on your finger is. We can pick up the soil or the container and get an idea of the weight of the container. And as you water it, you can notice it's heavier. And as it dries out, it gets very light. So you want to stay somewhere in the medium of that. Another tip that we have for people that are growing in soil is what you do is you take a handful of the soil after you've wet it not with the seeds in it, please. You grab it, you squeeze it. You do not want excessive amount of water to come out of it between your fingers. Once you open it up after you've squeezed it, it should stay to its form. If you go and touch it and it crumbles, then it's probably too dry. There's not enough moisture in there. But if it holds its shape without dripping water all over your hands, then you probably have a very close proximity to the amount of water to soil to air that you want in your growing medium. Okay, so we've discussed soil as a growing medium. Is there any difference to planting a seed in soil to say clay pebbles? Um, okay, the difference between clay pellets is that it has a very, um, they're large balls of clay. They have very large uh, openings throughout the growing medium. So if you put a small seed in, it'll just, especially when you water it, it's just gonna allow it to flow down to the bottom or erode down to the bottom, and then the plant is not gonna be able to come and germinate up and reach the surface. So at that point, what we must go and do is if we wanna use the clay pellets, we should take a, a rooting cube and plant into the rooting cube and then drop it in, such as this Rockwell cube that we have here, which we have a nice little spot for a seed. Or what we can also go and do is we can use a little bit of vermiculite, pour it on the top of the clay pellets, put the seed in, make sure it's all wet, treat it very gently because the clay pellets are round and they will shift a little bit as you move them around, so keep them very still. And once the seed germinates out, then it'll start holding the clay pellets together and give it some good, strong support. And how can we control the moisture levels in clay pebbles? Well, What's really interesting about all hydroponic growing mediums is when they're properly set up, you can take about five gallons of water in a very short period of time and pour it over. They will drain so quickly that the plant will never have a problem with the proper amount of moisture in there. The problem is we just gotta make sure that we feed it every couple of hours because of the drying factor. 
So every house is going to be different and how you can apply the moisture will be different from one house to another. But check your plants quite often when you're growing in the clay pellets so that you know that the plant is not getting dehydrated. Well, I can't be there every two hours to water my plants, so how can we get around this? I see you're like most people. We can't be married to our garden all the time. It's very easy. All we do is take a reservoir with a volume of water and a pump, take a little bit of tubing, connect it to the pump, and drip it onto the growing medium. So let's now discuss stone wool. Can you explain how you would plant a seed using this growth medium? Sure. What we have in front of us are three different types of stone wool. We have a long slab, we have a short little block, and we have a little cube. And there's the cube. The cube actually has a little indentation in it that we can put a seed into it. But once you put your seed into it, you must take a little pinch off the bottom of it and put it in the top to go and anchor the seed into the growing medium. When it cut, once the roots start coming through this growing medium, at that point you can transfer it over into a bigger block if you so wish. And if you're going to grow a much larger plant, something like cucumbers or tomatoes or green peppers, you want to go and create a next fashion in your growing, larger growing tray and pull the sides up. And now when you water it, the water will flow through into this, down into the bottom piece of the stone wool and it'll spread out by the way that the stone wool is designed and built. Before we wrap this up, is there any more final tips you can give us on growing mediums? Choose a growing medium. Make sure you're working with the proper pH with it. Make sure rock wool needs to be pHed out before you use it. Clay pellets need to be washed out. Soil just needs to be wet. So those make it very easy for you to get involved in the soil or indoor gardening situation with the hydroponics. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Bill, and your vast knowledge as ever. Thank you for having me here. It's now time for the Hydro Show competition. That's right. In each episode, we bring you the opportunity to win a small prize, followed by the chance to win big in the season one competition. Here's Nick with the competition prizes and how to enter. It's now time for our weekly competition, where one lucky viewer can win a complete set of plant nutrients. Designed to feed a crop from seed to harvest, this prize is the perfect addition to any hydroponic garden. And best of all, it's completely free to enter. Today's competition is sponsored by Plagron Plant Nutrients. All entrants of our weekly competitions will be automatically added to our grand prize draw at the end of the series. You could win a grow tent system worth over £3,000 all courtesy of our friends at Agritent. Visit facebook.com forward slash hydroshow and get liking for your chance to win one of our amazing prizes. Good luck! Coming up in part three of Hydro Show, we reveal the winner of this week's presenter challenge. Green Finger Hydroponics of London set up a gadget filled grow room in our Mega Rooms feature and Gemma sees a DIY IWS air pruning system at the aquaculture greenhouses. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Next time you're in your local hydroponics store, why not pick up a copy of Hydromag? Hydromag brings you in-depth information about all aspects of hydroponic growing, from growth mediums to systems, in fact, everything you need to grow your seed can be found in Hydromag. Hydromag is written by growers for growers. Hydromag, hydroponics, urban living and so much more. So why not visit our website www.hydromag.co.uk
With stores in Barnsley, Ripley and this superstore in Sheffield, aquaculture is the obvious choice for Yorkshire's hydroponic gardeners. Fully stocked with the latest and greatest hydroponic products, at Aquaculture we pride ourselves on quality service and advice. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, come and see our greenhouse facility in Sheffield and we'll show you how hydroponics really work. Aquaculture Hydroponics, stores in Barnsley, Ripley and Sheffield or online at www.aquaculture-hydroponics.co.uk. Do you want a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow? Well, let us introduce to you the Aroma Formula. So variable, it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The Aroma Formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit www.hydroponics.co.uk in May to find these fantastic offers. Holland Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Before the break, I interviewed Matt from Platinum Hydroponics and the girls were given the task of setting up one of his hydroponic dripper systems. Okay, so showing you the whole process would take up the entire episode, so we've speeded it up. Hopefully, this gives you an idea of what's involved in the setup of this system. Okay, so almost there now, as you can see. Again, run through the system. Pump's gonna pump it up, down the irrigation, into the lining, and each dripper then will spike into the growing medium, whichever one we decide to use. And that basically will continuously then drip feed, drip feed, drip feed. You can put that on the timer if you wanted, if you wanted to drip at particular times in the day. Um, and also you could set it to a pressure that was sort of dripping continuously, little and often, but most people have them through a the timer. Final piece on this, which is quite unique of the system, is this is a nice little viewing panel that I explained to you before, so you can still get to your pump, you can see what's happening, you can actually still get to the dial if you thought that the flow rate on the water was um, too strong or too, too slow, um, basically. And you can also, there's a gradient in here, so you can see, you can see what level your tank is in literage. And what you really don't want doing, you don't want any of the lighting hitting the nutrient solution water because that can cause problems to the nutrient. Okay. So what you basically do, pop your little cover on, job done. Job's a good one. And what we could also do then, the final sort of, you know, where you need to be in the system, the final piece really is you decide which growing medium you want and basically you'd fill the pot up, okay. get it to the desired level. If it's clear pebbles, you might have to treat them to get them pH stable. Instance to them.
And how far up are we going to be filling these pots? Uh, again, that, that varies depending on which plant you're growing. Um, for today, basically, if, you, if you, you're not going to be too careful if you're about an inch away so, sort of from the top. And this particular one with the drainage piece that we put in earlier on, this will become quite key because this is quite, it's quite a thin growing medium. Like I said, you can use clay pebbles, cocoa, or indeed the stone. Um, basically, what did you do then? You fill each individual pot. This particular, like I said, in these kind of dripper systems, really, is you would have an established little plant okay. or a little cutting, basically. And that could sit in a rockwool cube, sort of plate it into situ, and then basically now then, that's where the spike would come in, and you would spike it into the nutrient, into the grow media. As easy as that. Easy as. So there you have it. Setting up the Platinium 12 Pot Hydro Pro system took Matt about 19 minutes. However, he did stop to talk and explain what he was doing at several points throughout the process. Matt did comment that the studio was cold that day. This made connecting the irrigation pipe very difficult and it would certainly affect the girls' setup time. Let's see how they got on setting up their platinium systems in the presenter challenge. in the news. For growers with extra space in the kitchen for a second dishwasher or similarly sized appliance, the Urban Cultivator Home is a standalone indoor garden in a box. The same size as a standard kitchen white appliance, the Urban Cultivator is a convenient way to grow herbs and small plants in your kitchen. The system comes with built-in fans to manage air circulation and humidity. The Urban Cultivator features an onboard computer that controls watering and light cycles. For more information, visit www.urbancultivator.net. Designed specifically for grow tents, Hartyline believes that the North Star Reflector is the best ever designed for the hydro industry. Its innovative yet simple system of natural extraction allows heat from the bulb to escape freely from the unit which not only reduces the temperature by up to 13.8%, but also allows users to get the light source much closer to their plants. The inner profile has been developed specifically to spread light and reflection evenly. And although it's square shape, it makes perfect fit for grow tents. Artilines say they're seeing an increase in the use of North Star in some commercial applications. Raptor LED is a grow light technology that produces very little heat and seriously cut your electricity costs. 
Growers can now focus more of the energy usage of their garden while reducing the stress of high power bills. HPS grow lights on the other hand are not very efficient at converting your electricity into light because a large proportion of this power is converted into heat. The Raptor LED grow light range can now be purchased in the UK and Europe exclusively through Planet LED of London. Visit www.planetledlondonltd.com New Platinium System in 18 and 25 litre The Platinium Hydro Pro System is now available in larger 18 litre and 25 litre pots. If you prefer to have good spacing between each pot, the Hydro Big Pot is the modular system for you. With all the qualities and standards associated with the Platinium range, you now have even more choice when it comes to choosing the system right for you. The 18 litre pots give a good sized pot with plenty of space between each flowering site, whereas the 25 litre pots still give ample spacing with an extra 7 more litres for root development. Lumatech have been the number one selling electronic ballast worldwide for over 10 years. In the UK and Europe, the 600 multi-watt dimmable ballast is a proven reliable controller for HID lighting. It has allowed growers to achieve up to 30% more par spectrum lighting levels with up to 50% better light coverage of your grow area when compared with leading old style magnetic ballast. This also allows for more lumens per watt, which will also reduce your electricity bill. Hortiline have created a small clip fan with a big difference. They say the secret to their new 5 watt clip fan is its direct drive magnetic engine. Unlike conventional clip fans that use oil to lubricate rotation, Hortiline have incorporated a high quality magnetic fan that guarantees a longer lifespan than other products on the market. The fan's low 5 watt consumption means users can also save on their electricity bills, making the Hortiline clip fan one of the best on the market. With a lamp life of up to 29,000 hours, the Grow Lush HPS is a perfect fit for hobbyists and professional growers alike. Giving 20% more light than a standard HPS lamp, the Grow Lush gives exceptional value for money, giving growers a professional lamp for a sensible price. We're all aware that our plants require a range of different nutrients throughout each stage of growth, but it's rare that we see all of these nutrients available in one complete package. The Psycho Platinum Pro Kit does just that, giving serious growers everything their plant needs from start to finish. The Pro Kit even includes easy to read growth and bloom charts for all mediums, both of which are colour coded to make the kit as user friendly as possible. Cocoa Pots are a growing medium that come ready to use in their own square disposable container. The container is made from light proof black and white sheeting to protect the roots of your plant. Users can also pierce holes for drainage with ease. Simply add water or nutrient to your cocoa pots and sit back, making it one of the easiest hydroponics products on the market. In the last part of today's show, Greenfinger Hydroponics of London set up a gadget-filled grow room in our Mega Rooms feature. And Gemma sees a DIY IWS air pruning system at the aquaculture greenhouses. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by HydroMag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk.
With stores in Barnsley, Ripley and this superstore in Sheffield, Aquaculture is the obvious choice for Yorkshire's hydroponic gardeners. Fully stocked with the latest and greatest hydroponic products, at Aquaculture we pride ourselves on quality service and advice. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, come and see our greenhouse facility in Sheffield and we'll show you how hydroponics really work. Aquaculture Hydroponics, stores in Barnsley, Ripley and Sheffield or online at www.aquaculture-hydroponics.co.uk. At Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit www.hydroponics.co.uk in May to find these fantastic offers. Holland Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. Want a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow. Well, let us introduce to you the aroma formula. So variable it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The aroma formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. It's now time for our Mega Rooms feature, where we invite industry experts to set up an elaborate grow room system right here in our very own studio. Today we welcome Greenfinger Hydroponics, who have three stores in the London area. Let's see if they've got what it takes to build a hydroponics Mega Room. Greenfinger have used the new XL Autopot for their grow system. Featuring 24 pots, each 25 litres in capacity, this system comes supplied with a 400 litre flexi tank which automatically regulates the water level in the pots. The growing medium is Mapito. In each pot sits a circular trellis for rung support. For lighting, Greenfinger have used a combination of MaxiBright Sunmaster FX and Green Compact 600 watt ballast. The reflectors are supernovas loaded with Sunmaster metal halide lamps. Supplying the power to the lighting system is a MaxiSwitch Pro 8 contactor. For extraction, a 12 inch fan connected to acoustic ducting keeps the room cool whilst two hotbox heater and circulators warm the room if the temperature drops. Additionally, two 16-inch fresh floor fans circulate the air at ground level. In case the room temperature gets too high, Greenfinger have also supplied a water chiller, designed to maintain the correct temperature of the nutrient in the tank. Also connected to the tank is an OD air ozone gas generator, which oxidizes the pathogens and helps maintain a disease-free nutrient. And this DO machine produces 90% pure oxygen, which is then dissolved in the nutrient solution to raise the oxygen PPM in the tank, giving the plants healthier roots. A centrifugal humidifier will help keep humidity correct at different stages of the plant's growth cycle. And are you wondering what this strange looking contraption is? The BioWave DI 9200 is brand new to the UK market. Generating a subharmonic wave, the BioWave causes the plant stomata to dilate for increased gas and water exchange.
Today's Mega Room was brought to you by Greenfinger Hydroponics. If you would like any more information on this or any other Mega Room, see our official magazine Hydro Mag. As part of their plant nutrition research and development, Aquaculture have a greenhouse facility at their store in Sheffield. Last year I met up with co and Simon who showed me a modified Wilmer hydroponic irrigation system. So Simon, what are all these about? I mean, these crazy looking plant pots. What's this system? Okay, this is, a, um, this is what we call an IWS system. Um, again, slightly modified. We never always like to follow the conventions. Um, we have these crazy pots in here and these are called air pots. Essentially what an air pot does is as the root system starts to approach these weird looking cones at the edge, it prunes the root and kills the tip. But what that does, it makes the root system branch behind that, where those tips then approach these little areas again, which become pruned again, and they then branch again as well. So what happens, you get a very highly developed branched root system. The um, increase in um, surface area greatly improves the plant's ability to uptake water and nutrients. Um, we've actually put these air pots into what we call a flood and drain system. So two to three times a day, a pump in this reservoir over here will activate and pump water and nutrients into these pots. So the whole pot will become flooded with water and nutrients. What this actually does, it pushes all of the CO2 rich air out of the pot and refreshes the root zone with fresh water and nutrients and then the nutrient drains away back into the reservoir and when it does that it pulls all the oxygen rich air back into the roots again. Um, very, very um, good system for providing active vigorous rooting. That's really interesting, I mean what, what, what are these plants here you've got growing then? Uh, these are actually orchids, um, so they're very young orchids at the moment, we're um, be looking to grow these on over the winter time. Um, and hopefully look to flower these off in the greenhouse um, early in the springtime. Oh, fantastic. We'll have to come back and see how they flower then. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. We'll be revisiting the aquaculture greenhouses in Sheffield later on in the series. If you're interested in visiting their greenhouse, you can contact Simon and the team through their website. Visit www.aquaculture-hydroponics.co.uk and on that note, it's time for the end of the show. Thank you for watching. And here's Nick with what's on next week's show. Thank you, Gemma, on episode three of Hydro Show. Gemma gets a lesson in propagation at the aquaculture greenhouses in Sheffield. The girls battle it out for another presented challenge. Pooja interviews Dan, manufacturer of the Uvenair Ozone Generator. We also get some money saving yield boosting tips from Greenfinger Hydroponics and South Coast Hydroponics. Urban Hydroponics in Preston give us their interpretation of a hydroponic mega room. All that and more on the world's only hydroponics TV show. See you next week. If you've missed any of today's show, you can watch the whole episode again by visiting our website. Just go to www.hydroshow.tv. You can also visit our YouTube and Vimeo channels where you can see exclusive footage that you won't find in the show. Remember to tune in next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Hydro Show and Hydromag can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr and YouTube. Stay up to date and subscribe to our online services now.